All right. So here we have a man who is in a boat, is stuck in the middle of a lake in an attempt to reach the shore, which is 60 meters away. The man throws an object of mass one kilogram horizontally at a speed of 10 meters a second in the direction as shown in the diagram. Okay, guys. So pretty much what we have here is we have a guy sitting in a boat and his boat is stuck. He needs to get to the shore, but he's stuck. Okay. So what he decides to do is he decides to take this one kilogram object and he decides to throw it in that direction. Because according to the laws of physics and the laws of nature, if you push, for example, if you push against a wall, think about this. If you push against the wall, you're going to move in the opposite direction. And that is the same thing that's happening here. This man is going to throw this object this way. And what that will actually do is it will cause his boat to move off in the opposite direction. Just like he's pushing off a wall, it's the same type of idea. Okay. So they tell us that uh, the combined mass of the man and the boat is 100 kilograms. You can ignore air resistance and friction between the water and all of that stuff. The first question says, write down the principle of conservation of linear momentum in words. Okay, so I'm not going to go into the word for word definition, because to be honest, each textbook and uh, is different. Um, so I'm just going to give you a broad overview of what the definition is. Um, and so wait, we can say the total linear momentum of an isolated system remains constant in magnitude and direction. Now, the definition that you've learned might be a little bit different to that, um, but I know that your teacher probably told you that there's only one definition, but when you get to your final exams, what you'll realize is that there's, there, um, or what I've seen is that there's not one definition, but all that they are doing is they are looking for keywords in that definition. Okay, so that's sort of the idea behind that definition over there. The total linear momentum of an isolated system remains constant in magnitude and direction. All right, I'm going to go to the next question. 4.2 says, um, how will the force exerted on the object compare with the force exerted on the man boat? combination choose from greater than smaller than or equal to so guys this one is just going to be equal to and you can pretty much if they ever had to ask you for a reason you can just say something like newton's third law okay um pretty much newton's third law if i punch a wall then the wall so if i punch a wall with a force of 10 newtons then the wall is also going to hurt my hand with a force of 10 newtons. Whenever two objects exert a force on each other, the force is always going to be exactly the same. Did you know that if you're driving in a car, um, I don't know if you've ever done this with your, when, maybe when you were younger, uh, maybe when you were younger and you went on a road trip with your family, and sometimes when you've been on the, on the long roads and you've been traveling quite quickly at like 120 kilometers per hour, you sometimes go to the front of the car and you see that there's all these bugs and insects on the front of the car, there by the bonnet, right? Um, the reason for that is that the car, when the car is driving on the road, it is colliding with these little bugs. But did you know that the force of the car on the little bugs is exactly the same as the force of the bugs on the car because of Newton's third law? The only difference is, is that the car doesn't appear to experience that heavy for the, as much force or would experience the same force, but it doesn't have as much damage because it has a much larger mass. Okay. But the little bug is exerting the same force on the car as the car is exerting on the little bug. So it's Newton's third law. All right. So let's move on to this next one. Okay. So now we're going to look at this one over here. Six marks. That's pretty interesting. They said that calculate the time that it will take to reach the shore after this man throws the object. So what happens is that this man is chilling. 
uh, in his boat one day, maybe he's doing some fishing, and he's not moving at all. Then all of a sudden, he realizes, damn, I don't have an engine on my boat, and I'm too tired to paddle, and... I don't know how I'm going to get back to the ocean or I'm not to the ocean. I don't know how I'm going to get back to the shore. So he throws this object to the right. And what that means is that the boat will start moving to the left and that boat will move all the way back to the shore. Now, obviously in real life, your boat won't go all the way back to the shore. Why? Because of friction. The water friction would slow your boat down. But we have been told that we can ignore the friction between the water and the boat. So this guy is literally going to throw that object and his boat is going to start moving and it's just going to move forever and ever and ever and ever until he gets to the shore, which is uh, 60 meters away. Okay. So we're going to calculate that now. So to do this, we definitely, whenever we have two objects like this, um, you can think of the man in the boat as one object. So whenever we're looking at questions like this, we're definitely going to use this formula where we say that the sum of all the momentum initial is equal to the sum of all the momentum final. Then you must always choose a direction as positive. So I'm going to choose, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to choose to the right as positive. Then what I do is I go open up these different things. So I'm going to say M1 V1 initial plus M2 V2 initial equals to M1 V1 final plus M2 V2 final. Now let's let the man in the boat be object number one. And let's let this object over here be object number two. So um, I'm going to take the man in the boat as object number one. So that's 100 kilograms. Now, originally, the man and the boat are not moving, so that's zero. And then there's this one kilogram object, which is originally not moving. Remember, the guy's just sitting there with the object. It's not moving. Then all of a sudden, the man throws the object, okay? And so now we don't know what the man and the boat's velocity is going to be, but we do know that the one kilogram object is going to move at 10 meters per second. And it's moving to the right, and I chose right as positive, so I can keep this as a positive number. Then I can now calculate the, um, the velocity of this man and his boat. So if you had to work this out, you would eventually end up with zero is equal to 100 V1F plus 10 and then if you had to finally work out this man's velocity, the man in the boat, you would end up that it's going to be, we would end up calculating it as negative 0, 0,1. So what that means, therefore, is that the man in the boat are going to move off at 0 0.1 meters per second to the left hand side. Okay. So now all of a sudden, um, we know that this man is going to be moving, the man and the boat are going to be moving at 0 0.1 meters per second to the left. And they're just going to keep moving at 0 0.1. There's no other forces acting on them. So their velocity is just going to remain constant. There's no friction. There's nothing. So the man and the boat are just going to drift along at 0 0.1 meters per second. And they need to cover a total distance of 60 meters. Okay. Now you could use equations of motion if you wanted to right now. There's nothing wrong with that. And so the best one to use would possibly be this one over here. Okay. And we can say to the left is positive. Now, the total displacement or the total distance that we are going to be moving is 60 meters. What is the initial velocity of the man in the boat? Now, remember, you're not going to say zero. We're talking about after he's thrown the object. So that's going to be the 0 0.1. And the time, we don't know. Now, the man's acceleration is zero because he's moving at a constant velocity. And so what you would find, once again, is that this part over here just falls away. So we can actually ignore that. 
And what we are actually doing now is our grade nine, 10 uh, science, where we're using distance, speed, time, all of that stuff. Okay. And so if you had to then go work out the time, you would end up with 60 divided by 0 0.1. And so we would find that this man is going to take 600 seconds or 10 minutes um, to get back to the shore. 